Hi, everyone. I'm Monique Houston, your VP of Spirits Portfolio uh, and resident Spirits Geek. If you could see the desk in front of me right now, it looks a little bit more like a mad scientist lab, but um, I'm really excited to taste some shochu with you today. This has been quite a learning experience for me. Um, some of you that have gotten to know me a little bit better know I'm, I'm a whiskey geek at heart um, and really, really love my agave spirits as well. I will liken a tasting experience like this a bit more to agave spirits than anything. Um, I think it's a little intimidating. I know it's a little intimidating. It certainly was for me diving into a completely new category of distillates like shochu that we're about to taste through today. Particularly intimidating because my background in whiskey, I can tell things by the color, by the vintage on the bottle, all kinds of different cues that are given to you on the label. And we don't really have that across the shochu that we're working with right now from our friends at Honkaku Imports. These are all clear spirits. So here's just a couple of the ones that we're tasting today. So perfectly clear. That being said, this first tasting experience really blew me away. It's nothing like tasting through, let's say, just a range of vodkas, um, in particular because all of you already know, vodka can be made from any base starch. Um, and actually, shochu is quite similar. But where they are completely different, obviously, shochu is specific to Japan, but vodka is really defined by the fact that you're distilling that base starch into neutrality. You're distilling it up and over, um, you know, 192 proof. So the point is that it's running through a column still through so many plates of copper that it actually cleans up the spirit, and provides you with something neutral as a base. Shochu is wildly different. It is only distilled once, typically through a copper pot still. So that one-time distillation, so less than the whiskeys that we drink, less than pretty much any other distilled spirit that we drink, actually preserves the flavor, the nuance, the texture of the base starch that we're using in actually making the product. So we're going to taste through six different shochu today. I'm going to try and do this rather quickly, which will be a challenge for me. Um, but hopefully this will inspire you to taste through this range of Honkaku shochu yourself. So we're going to talk briefly. Um, we're going to start with Mugi Hoka. And I don't have the actual bottles here. I just have samples too. Mugi Hoka is 100% barley shochu. And this particular one is aged for five years in stainless. And it is the lowest proof of the shochu that we're offering in this range at 25% alcohol. Most distillates that we taste are over 40% alcohol. So all of these are actually going to be lower than that. That's quite proper and true for shochu. Because they're single pass distillation, a lot of you will know that that means they're actually not even able to distill much higher than 40 or 40, 45% alcohol. So lots of different serves here. With this one, our actual suggested pour with the Mugi Haka, this is the most whiskey-like of any of the shochu that we're presenting because it's made from 100% barley. In this, there's some chocolate malt. So um, one of our partners actually described this as um, a minimalist breakfast. So it's got notes of kind of coffee, toast, cereal, um, you know, roasted barley, a little bit of dark chocolate. So it sounds like a pretty good breakfast to me. Smells of all those things, tastes of all those things. And one of the recommended pours with this particular shochu is what is called oyuwari, which is with hot water. So we're going to use hot water to dilute it here. So I've got my little Japanese hot water pourer, and this is a really proper Japanese highball cup, glass. We're actually going to dilute it two to one and two to one water to spirit. And this really helps bring out all of those kind of minimalist breakfast notes. Again, coffee is really strong on this. Chocolate is particularly strong on this. One of the things I wanna make sure that we touch on too with each of these is the texture, because that's really how folks who drink a lot of shochu actually describe these. This one is particularly round, viscous. It's got great long finish, great depth. Really approachable really, really beautiful. If you're out doing a tasting with your customers, this is the one that I would start with. This is Mugi Hoka. We're going to move on to our second. Second distillate that we're tasting today from this Honkaku range is called Masako. We're going to stay in the barley theme here, but this particular one um, was arrested for 11 years in glass, and so just really allowed the flavors to meld and kind of mix together. Um, this one, we're actually just going to sip neat. That's kind of the recommendation here. I have this gorgeous Japanese shochu glass, the thinnest glass I've ever seen, it's four millimeters, four millimeters thin. We're just gonna sip on this one neat. This again, 100% barley and is at 35% alcohol. 
Um, as our folks tasted it, we're looking for cocktail um, kind of suggestions here too. This one is so different because it's rested much longer. It doesn't have any of that chocolate malt in it. Much more grassy, grain forward, a little bit of straw, a lot of anise. It's very herbaceous. And folks immediately went to dry gin martinis or even like a Rob Roy Blanc, which is a very traditional Scotch cocktail. Kind of makes sense because of the barley piece here. Very, very beautiful meat. The texture on this due to the higher ABV, a little bit drier, very clean. Again, really, really herbaceous and approachable. Just a gorgeous spirit. That was the Masako. Next, we're going to go to Motoko. Motoko, we're diverting from the barley. This is the first one that we're tasting that's made of long grain rice. So the long grain rice here, this is all going to be aged for eight to nine years in glass when they first put it in, in when they decided to bottle it. It was eight years old. By the time it actually got into glass, it was nine years old. So it says eight on the bottle. Really, it's more like nine. This one's bottled at 35% alcohol. This one, we actually recommend um, that you do this di like really diluted, um, a bit different from the first one with hot water. We're actually going to do this one with cold water. So this one is called Miyuwari. So this one I'm actually going to put into oh God, glass. this glass. I have so many glasses. I'm going to put this into kind of a nice bourbon glass. And again, we're gonna dilute it two to one, but this time with cold water. So we're gonna put the shochu in first, we're gonna add cold water, kind of a two to one ratio. And that's really gonna highlight the style of spirit that this long grain rice produces. So again, at 35% alcohol, this one really noses and tastes like a gin. It would go really well in any kind of gin cocktail, um, aviation, things like that. Some of the really interesting tasting notes that the team came up with, um, beans and rice, that came out of the Southeast, that won't surprise you. Azuki bean, if you've ever had red bean ice cream, there's this sweetness, this kind of rice quality to it, a little bit of salinity. And then once you get it on the palate, oh, it's gorgeous. Some tropical fruit, the salinity really right there at the finish, the texture, a little bit drier. The ABV definitely shows here, but this really gorgeous long finish. This again, gonna play really well in gin cocktails like the classic aviation. We're gonna move on to our fourth expression. This is called Mahoko. And we're diving into, maybe if you've already watched some of the educational videos, some of the um, sweet potato sochus that are very, very classic. And I think what a lot of people actually think of as shochu. This one, um, this is gonna be all sweet potato. This has been aged 15 years, actually now 16 years now, that's been about 16 years in glass. So really well rested, really just kind of like chill, beautiful, long, round mouthfeel, very mouth coating, very viscous, really lingering. This one, we really, again, like neat or even with water. I'm just gonna pour this neat into a classic whiskey glass. Classic whiskey snifter, I have quite a few of them sitting around. Um, for this one, it also, they recommend the mahoko is quite good with water, but in the case of sweet potato sochus, shochus, excuse me, would not recommend putting hot water in. Hot water has a tendency, if you do the oyuwari treatment, hot water has a tendency actually to scorch sweet potato-based shochus, so they don't recommend it. So if you're doing anything with sweet potatoes, we're gonna, again, either neat, fantastic, or we're gonna do two to one with cold water. This one, I'm just doing neat, really, really pretty. This, um, the recommended cocktail serve, once you try this, you'll get it herbaceous. We got jennepy, um, all kinds of gin botanicals, lemongrass, it, was, it had a little yeastiness to it. Like I said, again, rested 15 to 16 years, very, very lingering. Um, to use a scotch term, this is probably the one with the longest finish. This is very more-ish. You're kind of asking for more of it. It's just like sitting there on your palate. Um, we went with a classic cocktail for this, like a 50-50 with tonic would be really good. Also, there was the suggestion of a food pairing that if you were doing anything sushi with uni, that this could be like an uni back. So you'd have that bite of uni, chase it with this neat, be absolutely perfect. I haven't gotten to try it yet, but I can't wait. Gorgeous, easy, simple serve. Oh, the herbaceousness in this. It almost just tastes like meat gin. It's really amazing, but the mouthfeel is just so much different, so much more approachable. Moving into number five here, we are on colorful, staying in the sweet potato vein, but this is a blend of two different kinds of sweet potatoes. Um, this one, a little bit lower in alcohol. We're down to 30% alcohol. 
And this particular one, um, the maker, these are our past um, few have been made by female toji or master distillers. The, this particular one is a little more subtle, a little more nuanced, and they actually really like it served almost as wine would be. So they recommend in a wine glass. I just grabbed one of my stemmed whiskey glasses. Stem makes me feel fancy. So this one, we're actually going to dilute even further than a classic Miyuwari. We're actually going to dilute it down to kind of like wine strength. So we're going to look to get down to like 12% alcohol. And people would then either serve it just neat. If you've got really cold water, you could even throw a cube or two in it, depending on the weather. This smells like Muscat. When you taste this, you will be blown away. There is this kind of Pisco, Singani, Muscat de Alexandria, super floral. You would think that it was wine. So this pour makes perfect sense. You could drink this in place of like your Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc, Rosé for the summer absolutely gorgeous. And two, because of all those grape notes that are naturally in this sweet potato shochu, it actually lends itself quite well to things like pisco sours. Gorgeous. Finish is really dry, a little bit more tannic. This particular one is, is um, lightly filtered, so it's a little bit drier on the finish. None of that kind of sweetness of the muscat that you get on the nose. Absolutely gorgeous. This was colorful shochu. And last but not least, we're tasting six shochu today. We are going to finish with the cellophant. So we've gone from barley to long grain rice to a couple of different kinds of sweet potatoes. We're actually going to finish with cellophant, which is kokoto sugar shochu. So very special, made from sugar. It's not rum because it's not distilled to high enough proof. This is just a single pass through the still. And the recommended serve here, it's 30% alcohol, is actually over ice. So grabbed another one of my cute little highball glasses. Pour a little bit of this over ice, stir it around. Really, really reminiscent, this won't surprise you because it's sugar distillate of rum. And we really recommend that you use it in the place of rum. So it would go great with a mojito, something where you're also maybe mixing in some more of those Asian Japanese flavors like shiso, um, even a little bit of savory note. This is super floral, grassy, almond, saline quality to it. Really, really approachable over ice. Finishes dry and sweet, really does kind of finish like rum. Very, very pretty, like a, a white rum. So great to taste someone out on um, that is really into rum. And again, just even the breadth of flavors in all of these, they drink so much more, I would say, like tasting through a range of agave than anything else I've ever had. They show a lot of terroir, a lot of sense of place. These honkaku shochu are incredibly special these single pass distillates that really, really retain the base, the texture, the flavor of those starches that they come from. Um, I hope that you get to taste all of these soon. Taste them along with me. Get out there and pull those samples. I'd love your feedback. Thank you.